Hi, I'm Birgit O'Connor, and welcome to the Bolinas Mesa. It's spring here, and all the wild iris are in bloom. So this gives me the perfect opportunity to try to show you how to create the veins within a flower. Now these techniques can be applied to any type of iris or any other kind of flower that does have veins in it. We'll go back to the studio where we're going to be working on the demonstration and you'll see how much pigment to apply to a drying surface. So let's go back to the studio and have some fun. Before I leave the field, I always like to take reference photos. This way I can work on flowers throughout the year. You can use a disposable, digital, or 35 millimeter camera. Before I choose my composition, I like to place a few photos in front of me. This way I can use my intuition to see which image I'm immediately drawn to. Now to choose some colors. If it's really important to be really accurate, you can always create a color chart. I pick the range of color that I want to work within, and then I choose the colors that I'm drawn to. I pick my colors more from an emotional level. The colors I'll be using are quinacridone magenta, permanent alizarin crimson, ultramarine violet, and French ultramarine blue. I try to choose the colors that have the highest manufacturer's light fast ratings. Here are some of the brushes I'll be using. This is a Da Vinci Cosmotop mix. This is a combination of Kalinsky Red Sable, Russian Blue Squirrel, and Russian Fitch. This has a large capacity to hold water. The sizes I'll be using are in number 30, 20, and 18. If you're looking for substitutes, make sure there's still a Sable Synthetic Blend. Here is another one of my favorite brushes. This is the Windsor Newton Scepter Gold Series. The sizes I'll be using are number 20, 18, and 14. Here is one of my original and most favorite brushes. This is called Cosmos. The Da Vinci Cosmotop Mix Series is actually the replacement for this brush. As a substitute, you can always use an inexpensive mop brush. I'm now going to take a number 12 round brush, put some pigment on it, and place it on my palette. I'll mix it with some water to get the right consistency, then place it in my notebook as a reference. Then I'll repeat the process with French Ultramarine Blue. Here you can get a pretty good idea of how much water I like to add to get the right consistency. Then I'll label the colors. This way I can always know which ones I used when I created my painting. This way if I want to create something similar, I already have a guide. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a half sheet of Arches 300 pound cold press paper. I always like to place a towel at the bottom of my painting. This way I can rest my brushes or wipe off any excess water. You can see that I've already created my basic design and I can always use my reference photo to help me with any of the finer details. This may have a complicated appearance. What I was trying to represent in my line drawing was any folds or unusual shapes. As I go along with my painting, I will simplify. I'm intending to work wet into wet within a controlled area, so I need to fill in the petal with clean water. I'll be using my large Cosmos or Cosmotop to work within this area. I'm going to mix a combination of ultramarine violet and French ultramarine blue and mix them on my palette. Then I'll use a number 12 brush and go along the inside of the edge of my flower. Some colors like to spread more than others. 
This depends on the type of pigment, the color consistency, and mix to water. You can see how I'm now simplifying my line drawing with my color. Now using my number 8 synthetic, I'm randomly going to add a couple strokes. Then I'll work my way along the edges just so it has a consistent line. You have to watch the drying time of your surface because if it's too wet, the colors will spread and if it's too dry, the colors won't move. Here you can have a better idea of where I've placed my pigments and how it's starting to create the illusion of the petal. To continue, I'll allow this area to dry, then I'll move on to the next petal and repeat the process. You can already see how some of the values are being created. Notice how I place the darker and richer colors more towards the center of the flower and the lighter values towards the edges. For any dry areas, I can use my number 12 brush with clean water and help smooth it out to give it a consistent appearance. Now using a number 8 synthetic, I can help give the illusion of a couple folds. In this larger area, I'm going to repeat the same process by wetting the inside of the petal I'll be working on. Ideally, I'd like to have the same consistency of water over the entire surface. Some artists like to soak the entire piece of paper and then work wet into wet. My technique is a combination of both. I like to work wet into wet, dry brush, and within controlled areas. This is simply just one way to approach flowers. Notice the amount of water that I have on my surface. This way I can easily apply the brush strokes. It's not important that you go along the entire edge of the flower. You want to be a little random. This helps to give it more of a natural appearance. Leaving some areas white will help to give me the appearance of highlights. To have more variation in color, I'm going to add a little new gamboge, Indian yellow, and alizarin crimson and add it to the center of this petal. To smooth out any feathered effects, I can always lift my paper, rotate it. You can also use a clean brush and remove any of the excess water and help to blend it in. Notice how the surface is becoming more matte in appearance. At this stage, I'll have more control when I work on the veins. I'll be using a number three synthetic brush. I want my color mixture to be fairly dry. This way it'll be less likely to spread. When you're holding your brush, place your hand higher up the shaft. This way it'll be a little looser and the appearance will be a little freer. I'm going to be using my line drawing as my guide, but I'm really not too concerned if I stay right on it. I know that some artists really don't like to see any pencil lines, but for myself, I feel that's part of the painting. 
you are going to have to move fairly quickly, otherwise your surface is going to dry faster than you can work. Notice how your color is spreading and drying. You may have to reapply some veins. The most important thing is to have fun and see what feels right to you. It's not about being extremely accurate. For a more natural appearance, I'm just going to add a few little dabs of color. And remember, watercolor always dries lighter. Here you can start to get an idea of how the petals are working together. Notice how the values seem to be similar. Now I'm going to review my line drawing. When I start a painting, the areas I like to focus on are the larger petals first. Here you can really see how I like to work one petal at a time. If I tried to work too many areas all at once, it could get a little out of control. By filling the petal area in with clean water and then using the wet into wet techniques, it helps to give me the illusion of hard and soft edges. Working with the combination of both surfaces, dry and wet, it helps me to have more control over the color saturation. You can see how I like to take my brush, load it with color, move it along the edges, and allow it to spill into the clean water. If I'm working with a color that doesn't want to seem to move on its own, I can always use a Cosmos or Cosmotop and add some water to help smooth it out. Using the same idea, I want to give this area shape. So I'll load my brush full of pigment so it has a richer density and that it can flow into the clean water. Notice how the shape is starting to be created. While working on this large petal, I want to take full advantage of any value changes. When you're working on flowers, you want to use your lighter values as your highlights. I'm going to add a little Indian yellow and new gamboge and place it in the center of this petal to help again give it that natural appearance. My intention is not to follow my reference photo but it's to use it as a guide. You'll have a lot more freedom if you don't try to be technically accurate. I want to pay attention to the drying time on my surface. I'm looking for more of a matte appearance. That means you look for the glisten to leave the paper. This way I'll have more control over my veins. In an ideal situation, the surface will be drying evenly, but if it's not, that's okay too. Just work with what you have. Don't struggle with it if you can't get everything down at this time. You can always reapply it when the surface is dry. You can see how I'm gently allowing the brush to flow along the surface. It's alright if the tip doesn't continually touch the paper. This will help to give it a softer and more natural appearance. When you're working on your veins, you want to start on the inside of your flower and then gently move out to the edge. This will help to give it a sweeping appearance. As you're working your veins, you want it to branch off two or three times. You don't really want to do much more than this, otherwise it's going to look too busy.
And again, to make this a little more interesting and to break up the space, I'm going to add a few drops of color. See how the painting is starting to pull together. While I'm painting, I always like to rotate my paper. This helps me to find the right compositional balance and color. This way I don't get caught up in the idea of what a flower is supposed to look like. It also helps me to see where I need to place details or add a potential highlight. As I start to work the inside of the flower, I'm going to increase the density of color. Here I'll be using a dry brush technique. That means the surface of my paper is dry and my brush is loaded with color. By applying the pigment directly to the paper, it won't disperse across the surface. I'll also have a richer intensity of color. My intention is to have the values play off each other and the darker colors will help to create depth. I really only use my reference photo as a guide. It allows me to use color, intuition, and form. Notice how I've taken the complicated line drawing and simplified it with color. As I move into the smaller areas, I reduce the size of my brush. This helps me to have more control over where I place the color. You can see how I repeat the process using clean water, then adding the color. You can see how I've chosen to work with my largest shapes first. Remember for that controlled appearance, I'm allowing some of the edges to be completely dry. To make the painting more interesting, I'm going to add the Indian Yellow and New Gamboge. I continually have to assess what brush size I want to use. If it's too large and holds too much water and pigment, it'll disperse across the surface. So for this area, I'm going to use a number 12 Sable Synthetic Blend. And for the finer details, I'm again going to use the number 3 Synthetic Brush. By only adding a few veins, it really helps to give the impression of this iris. Before I continue, I'm going to allow these petals to completely dry. Now you can see how the pieces are starting to work together. At this stage, I always like to reevaluate. I allow the painting to completely dry before I continue on. To help me have a better visual reading, I'm starting on my smaller shapes. Depending on the area, I'm not afraid to let the clean water go over the pencil drawing. This helps me to simplify. My intention is to work next to the lighter petal to help bring it forward. If I need to intensify the color, I'll work in layers. I'll allow the previous one to dry before I move on. Then once I'm satisfied, I'll start to work on the shadows. And if I have any puddles, I'm going to take my brush then soak up the excess water. Remember, I'll be using the number three synthetic brush. What I'm looking for is a drier pigment mixture. That means less water and more color. In addition, I'm going to take my brush and lightly dab it on my towel to remove any excess water. Notice the placement of my hand, how it's higher up the shaft. 
and how I'm lightly touching the paper. And to keep it consistent with the others, I'm going to add a few drops of color. As this petal dries, some of the pigment becomes dispersed. Then I'll reapply some color. If there's too much water on the tip, it has a tendency to backwash into the color. If I need to, I can wipe off my synthetic brush and then gently go along the edge to smooth out any feathering effects. Let's look at the overall painting. This is going to help me to decide if I need to rework any areas. In this petal, some of the color has really dispersed, so I'm going to reapply the veins. Notice how the surface is becoming more matte in appearance. This will help me to have more control. I'm looking for lights and darks and where I want to roll some petals. I'm going to refer back to my reference photo. It almost feels like working with a puzzle, and where do the small pieces fit? In these areas, it's actually becoming more abstracted. I don't want this to be the focus. I want this to be a companion area to the painting. So what you'll notice here is that I'm going to simplify the shapes and work with values. I'm really not going to be concerned if it looks like anything. I just want to break up the space. Notice how it's color next to color, and I'm still able to achieve some depth. This has to do with the different value grade. As you can see, I work with a combination of techniques wet into wet, dry brush, and washes within contained areas. You have to develop a feel for where it's alright to go over your pencil drawing with clean water. And think about what areas you want to leave dry. Remember, some colors will want to move more than others. To change that, all you have to do is lift your paper up and roll it around. Here you can see how the color is moved and how it's created a blended effect. Notice how I'm working each individual petal and every section has one layer of water and pigment. Right now it's about working the overall painting. I haven't yet worked on layers. Remember, if I want a richer intensity of color, I'm going to use less water and more pigment. Here again, I'm going to use the larger brushes for the bigger shapes and the smaller ones for the finer areas. Notice with the finer synthetic, I have more control over where I place the color. In this area, I want to help it roll off the page. So I'll repeat the process, and this time use one of my smaller brushes and gently go along the edge. By using a synthetic, I'm able to have more control over where I place the pigment. You can see how this is starting to lift off the paper. Now I need to finish filling in the smaller areas with color. It all looks abstracted. You can't really focus on any one particular area. I believe that this can be more helpful 
because you're not using your linear mind. You're not trying to identify the flower. You're only looking at shapes. You end up just having to work with it. So here you can be in conflict. You want to identify it, but you really can't. So notice your body, see if you're tense, and if you are, relax. Because then you're fighting with yourself and you're not allowing it to flow. By filling in the smaller areas with color, I'm really not yet concerned on how these appear. I'm looking for the overall tone of the painting. When I'm working on the smaller details, it helps to prepare me for where I want to place my shadows and what kind of values I want to use. What kind of effect do I want to achieve? To rework any areas or intensify the color, I'm going to place clean water again over the dry surface and then reapply the color. Now I get to work on the really fun part, working the shadows. I'm going to start slowly and begin with the center of my flower. The colors you choose and the values you work with will create the entire feeling for the painting. Here again, I'd suggest not to try too hard. To create a neutral gray, use two complementary colors. If you've noticed shadows, they're not entirely just one color or one shade. There can be a filtered appearance or a dark intensity. Again, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and what do you want to convey to your viewer. The colors I'll be using are a little French ultramarine blue, a little indigo, and burnt umber. When I create my deeper shadows, I use less water. This will help me to get a really rich dark color without going black. If I wanted to keep this painting more decorative, I would use less color and more water. This is when I suggest that you should pay attention to the colors you're drawn to. This way the painting will be more reflective of who you are. Again I'd like you to notice how I just plunged in and created simplified shapes with my shadows. This is helping to bring out the appearance of the flower, but it's still really abstracted. One reason why I immediately decided to go dark is because I wanted to see the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. Now to fill in the smaller details. I'll again use my finer synthetic tip. By continually rotating my paper, it helps me to identify the overall balance. It will also help you see if your composition is working in all the directions. Now by working on the details, it will help me pull the flower completely together. If there's any area that I want to bring forward or try to create any kind of roll, I can use my dry brush technique. I'll apply the stroke of color to the surface, then using a clean brush, I'll smooth out one side. This will help to give the illusion of a hard and soft edge. Now that I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going with my painting, I can start to think of the background. But before I start, 
I'm going to have to clean off my palette. This will help me from having my colors become muddy. You'll notice that some of the colors will appear drier than others because I may not use them as often, but I can always go back in and re-moisten them or add more color. Just as I did in the beginning, I'm going to check my colors first, then place them in my notebook. Now I have to decide what I want to do. When I've created my paintings, I've worked with both kinds of backgrounds. If I choose the wet into wet techniques, you'll be focusing on the flower. I realized in the earlier stages of my career, my paintings were more detailed and complicated. I wanted everything to be perfect and in the right place. I tried to be as accurate as possible instead of just allowing things to flow. By simplifying, you're giving yourself a greater sense of freedom. Here I'll be using a combination of mixing my colors on my palette and also directly on my paper. Some of the colors that I'll be using are a permanent sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and perhaps a little yellow ochre. Traditionally, watercolorists have always soaked their paper first, then attached it to a board. I found this to be an obstacle, and it felt limiting. I just wanted to paint. I also realized that I didn't have the flexibility of easily lifting my paper or rotating it. Depending on my subject, I like to work with either a 140 or 300 pound cold or rough press arches paper. For my techniques, I found that the 140 has a smoother and sharper appearance, while the 300 seems to be more full body and has a richer color saturation. You can see how I'm still working my way around the painting. Here I'll be using a dry brush technique. That means the brush is loaded with color and I'm applying it to a dry surface. Notice how the color intensity is richer. And then by using clean water, I can help pull the color out. You can now see how the illusion of the background is being created. I'd like you to notice the overall tone of the painting and how all the values seem to be fairly similar. The only difference is the dramatic dark shadows. Right now I have the potential of a very strong flower and a very weak background. I'll be able to change all of this with dry brush techniques and layers of color. The brush I'll be using for this color application is my Cosmotop Sable Synthetic Blend. If you use a nylon or inexpensive brush, you have the potential of picking up the color underneath when you're reapplying your layers. Then you won't have a smooth appearance. You'll have the effect of brush strokes. It'll also really depend on how dry your paper surface is when you reapply the water. You can now see by adding the second layer of color to the background, it's helping to make it more dramatic. The colors are starting to intensify. Experiment and see what colors work for you. As you're working your way around the painting and adding your second layer, it's now becoming more balanced. 
If I decide to rework an area, again it has to be completely dry. This is what I'll consider my third layer. I'll reapply my water, and if I want to, I can take a paper towel and lift some color out. In this area, I've decided to experiment. I'm going to use a little cadmium yellow and place it on top of the darker colors. This will help have a variegation in the surface because the cadmium yellow will want to separate from the darker colors. You can see how the background is really starting to become interesting. It almost seems to have its own story. Now to work with my last white area. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to go with this, but I decided I'm going to add a little indigo. This is going to help to have a variegation in the color. When you're working on a painting, don't try to think about it too much. Otherwise, you might be disappointed because it might not be exactly what you had in your mind. It's actually your own interpretation, your feelings and emotions, your own inner voice. Allow yourself the time and the space to experiment. And most of all, remember to relax. Again, that sounds like an easy thing to do. But if you notice your body, and if it feels tense, recognize that and let it go. Now it's time to clean off my palette so I can intensify the color, shape, and volume of my flower. I'll be using the same colors I did when I started my flower. A little French ultramarine blue, violet, indigo, and a little burnt umber. I'll still be working the areas with the hardest and darkest shadows. I want to complete the body of the flower. Notice how I'll change my brushes. I'll start with a number 20, then to a number 14, and for the finer details, a number 6. This will help me to accommodate the area. Now it's time I refer back to the reference photo. I'd like to see how it compares to my painting. It's not important for me to represent exactly what I'm seeing. I'm just using this as a guide. What I do see from the photo is that I can intensify the color and create more depth. Now I'm going to return to the colors that I used in my shadows and petals. But this time I'll use more water. I want this to be more of a medium value. I don't want it to be really dark or really light. Now I'll move on to the next petal. I'm going to mix my colors and I'm going to add it over my shadows. So what I'll be doing is building another layer by adding more color. Remember, I'm able to go over this area because it's completely dry. And I'm going to use a sable synthetic blend to help smooth it out. Notice how the petals are starting to lift away from the background. This is all created by varying your washes, values, and intensity of color. Here you can see how I'm reworking and building the deeper shadows. Here is a good example of the multiple layers and different values. And from this very close perspective, it still shows depth. Now you can really see how I get the intensity of color in my paintings. It's all about the placement of the pigments. And when I'm working in layers, 
it doesn't mean the entire painting. To help give the appearance of this small petal rolling over, I'm going to use my Cosmo Top brush and fill it with clean water. Then again, to have more control over my pigments, I'll be using a synthetic brush. You can see as I apply the color, it doesn't just spread across the surface. This technique helps to give it the appearance of coming out of the center of the flower. As you can see during the drying time, some of the color dispersed and almost completely disintegrated. I'm really not too concerned about this. I can always go back and rework an area. It's always important to start simply and then as you go along, reevaluate. Now I'm going to start focusing on how to give the smaller petals more shape and depth. For some areas I'll use the dry brush technique and others the wet into wet. Where I place my color will help me with the illusion of lifting off the paper or rolling over. Then again rotating the paper, I'll have a better idea of the value changes and intensity of color. Looking at it in an abstracted form helps me to decide where it might look flat. This placement of the color will help the petal have the illusion of folding backwards. When applying your clean water, you want to make sure that it has a large enough band so the color can't run to the edge. I'm going to work my way around the painting to look for the areas where I want to place my dry brush techniques. This will help to give it the appearance of more detail and ruffled edges. At this point, I'm not trying to be perfect. I want to allow the placement just to feel right. Notice the dry brush stroke, then the clean water. In this detail, you're able to see how much body this petal has. Now I'm going to reevaluate the veins within the petals by looking at each one and then the overall painting. I'll have a better idea of how much I really need to reapply. You can see by just adding these few details, it helps to make the painting look more complex. Well, thanks for joining me today, and I hope that you've had fun and that you too now have a better understanding on how to create the veins within a flower and watching the drying time and the pigment saturation and how important that is. So go and have fun and experiment. I'll see you next time.